Hi, so I'm going to show you how to install CentOS Linux uh, version 8. And um, when you boot up your computer, it will come up and then you choose to boot to disk to come up to this screen. And on this screen, you can choose to, if you use the up and down arrows on your keyboard, you can either choose to install CentOS Linux directly, or you can first test the media and see if it's working. But for mine, I know it's working. So I'm going to test the, I'm going to install the OS. Just give it a, a few moments to do its thing. Okay, so it starts to boot up. <clears throat> right, so as it goes through the installer, it's now getting all the packages ready for us to, to start the installation process where we're going to now Go using the GUI to choose um, the options that we want to create our users, to partition our disk, and um, to put all the settings that we find necessary for our installation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to select our language. Um, and our language, we will use the English, and we click continue. Okay, so here now is where most of the configurations that you want to do are located. So the keyboard, we can change it here, but we would rather use the English US keyboard. So just click down there. Installation source, we are using local media. Yeah, so it's a disk that is installed. That's what we're using, so it's fine. Language is fine. Time and date zone. We can choose um, a different time zone, but for America's New York, for me, that's okay. And then we can also choose... Um, what kind of server do you want to install? Do you want to install a server with a GUI interface that we can use click um, a mouse to navigate or um, a small server that is easy to manage, minimal install, which has got a very basic functionality workstation, which is more like a desktop computer or a virtualization host. And then we can also choose which default packages we want to be installed right at the start when we're installing our OS. So in this instance, I would say, um, I want to install the FTP server during the installation uh, process of the OS. So I'll click done here. And then now the important thing, the important part that is key is the installation uh, destination. So by default, sent OS chooses the automatic partition selected. So if you click on that, um, you'll get to the uh, settings for partitioning. So I have a 20 gig disk just to demonstrate what's up, uh, how to do this. So you select your disk, and then when you select your disk, you make sure that it has got this um, tick on it. So when you select it, you may have to click twice for this disk to appear. Then you come here, and then that's where you choose whether you want it to have an automatic partitioning or a custom partitioning. So if you choose a custom partitioning and you click done, it will take you to an interface where now you can actually partition your disks. So the way I do it, I initially click here to create the partitions automatically. So it will create the key partitions initially. So since I've got a 20 gig disk, I would say for my root partition, I'm going to give it uh, maybe just 10 gig, okay? And I'll leave it as an LVM, which is a logical volume that we can expand later on. And it will be in the volume group, volume group CL. And the file system will be XFS. And then when that is done, I will move to the slash boot. Slash boot, I'll leave it as it is. I'll, I'll make it a standard partition. And uh, the swap, since it's a small disk, I'll just give it, I'll give the um, virtual machine two gig RAM. So swap has to be double the RAM. So since I'm giving this uh, the machine two gig RAM, swap will have to be uh, four gig, okay? So now I want to add another partition. So I want to add um, the slash var partition. So I can choose slash var is the mount point and the capacity I want to give it is two gig, okay? So if I click add mount point, so now we now have the slash var partition. I can create my own custom partition, which could be slash data, slash data partition, which is a, uh, my own, partition and then I will also give it two gig just for demonstration purposes and if I click add mount so this will be the partitions created also I may have to create a slash home partition um, 
and the desired capacity, I'll give it a uh, one gig, okay? And then I'll click add mode points. Now you will realize that all these have been adding as LVM. Now I prefer LVMs because whenever you run out of space, they can easily expand. But if you change it to standard partition now, if you run out of space, you won't be able to expand that partition. So if you want to use um, the standard partition, you need to make sure that you are allocating all the space at once that that partition will require. If you want LVM, then you can expand as you go on. Now LVM thin provisioning means that is um, when you when you allocate storage to that logical volume, it will not be really available to it all at once, but it will be given as and when it needs all that space. I'll also use the XFS file system because it's uh, I find it to be better than all the other uh, EXT file systems, but that also depends on your application. So after I've done all my partitioning, I can now go to, I can click on done. So this will show you the amount of space left. So here, this is what you can use to track how much space am I left with. So if you allocate two gig right now, you can, you can if you create a new partition, you can't give it two gig because this is less than uh, two gig. So you have to give it something less than one gig. Okay, so if I click done here, yeah, it's going to ask me if I want to uh, format the whole drive and and make the change that I've indicated during my partitioning. So I'll say accept changes here. So my partitioning has now been applied. Now, once I've done this, that here you can also configure your network and your security. If you choose the network part, you can turn it on here. When you turn it on, you then say configure. So this will be the connection name, which is the device name. And then under IPv4 settings, that's where you add your IP address. So right now it's using DHCP, but I want to change it to a manual. So I want to give it a, an IP address myself. So my IP address could be 10.10.20.3, and my uh, net mask would be 255.0.0.0, and my gateway could be 10.10.20.1. So that will be my IP. My DNS servers, 10.10.20.5. And then I separate them with a comma, 10.10.20.6. And um, I think that's all I need for my configurations. And by so doing, I have all my, my configurations to be able to communicate with all my network. So I'll click save for that. And now my network, my, um, my machine has got an IP address, a default route, and everything that it needs. I can also change the, the host name here. So I'll call it my example host dot example domain. So this will be uh, the name of the, server, of the server, which is example host. And then you click apply. So that means now that this is the new host name. And then you click done, which means you're finished. And once you're finished all those configurations, you just click on begin installation. Now, when you click begin, begin installation, it starts installing all the packages that are required to do the operations and to make sure that your server is working. But, while, but whilst it's doing that, you can actually set the root password here. So I can choose to set the root password to something um, that you want. You could say, just call it pass, uh, sorry. Let me just set the root password here. Now it's weak, but it will do for me. So once you've entered it like that, you click done twice so that it accepts the weak password. And then you can also create a user. So my user will be Taku. That would be the full name will be maybe Takuzwa. The username could be Taku. That's what I want. I don't want the user to be an administrator and I want a password for this user. So also cite a password. And as you can see, you, you can do this whilst the server is actually doing the installation of the various packages required for it to do all its work. So right now it has stored uh, 22 out of the 1,035 packages required. So, all right. So the CentOS Linux is successfully installed. So all we have to do is just to reboot it and start. So I'll click reboot. So it's now rebooting. So we choose the core version, the core line. The rest one is used when you've got some challenges that you want to solve on your OS. So now it's booting into the OS for the first time. So when you get the login interface, it means you have managed to successfully install your um, operating system. 
So just waiting for it to, to log in. Since it's the first time it's setting up to give us some license information. So we'll click on licensing, we'll accept the license and we'll click done. And then we click on finish configuration. Okay, so now we have our login interface. So we'll log into the user Takuzwa. We'll enter the password for Takuzwa, sign in, and we've managed to successfully sign in into Takuzwa. So that means we've managed to um, install our CentOS successfully. So we managed to partition our disk and also to, to get it working. So if you get to the desktop, so we're on the desktop, the first time you log in to going to give you this welcome page, you choose English as our language, you click next, you just leave the default English typing keyboard, next, um, location services, if you want to leave them all next, that's fine, and then you just skip this part and you're ready to go. Okay, you have some getting started, but that's not important. So this becomes your desktop. So we've managed to successfully install our, our OS, and this is the process that you take any time that you want to install most of the CentOS um, versions. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you subscribe to my channel and you watch more videos to do with IT and everything.